Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about something near and dear to my heart, which is Japanese literature. Um, I think I'm going to title this Japanese Literature Gateway Drugs. Um, these are the books that I first read either from these authors or the first uh, Japanese literature I read, period. Um, one thing that I find that Japanese literature does... Uh, it's probably because of the translations, okay? Um, let's get that straight. Uh, none of these books were actually written by the people who wrote them, which sounds funny, but the, all these books have been translated. None of them were translated by the author. So, but one of the things that a lot of stuff gets lost in translation, I hear, of course, I don't know Japanese, but there's also the aspect that there's a lot of simplicity, um, and I like poignant simplicity. I like when a book is is extremely deep, but on the surface it seems simple. And that seems to be what uh, Japanese literature does the best. Um, I think I articulated that properly. Um, if you guys are fans of Japanese literature, I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. But for right now, we are going to jump into this. The first thing um, I want to talk about... Uh, Ryu Mitakami is a new favorite author of mine. Uh, I had only read the, the miso in the miso soup, which we're talking about today. Um, but I'm currently reading Piercing, and I'm loving it. Uh, the guy is disturbing. He's got some dark comedy going on. I really do like it. Uh, but in the miso soup was my first from him, and this made it onto my top five list of the most disturbing scenes. Uh, the, the reason for that is very simple. There's a scene in a restaurant with an ear. Um, if you've ever read this book, that's what I'm talking about. It has stayed with me forever. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about two... We're, I'm going to kind of interrupt myself here and talk about two books that I personally didn't care much for, but a lot of people recommend. I want to try and do this more often um, because I'm a big fan of differing opinions, as long as you're not rude about it. Um, but... The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. I'm probably saying that wrong. You guys know how I do. Um, I can't pronounce anything. So, this one didn't work for me just because of the... Man, it's it's difficult to say uh, why. It, there, there was... I know it's Japanese culture, but the way they treat women, it just, it just sucks. Let's see here. Uh, next up is The Ring by Koji Suzuki. This is another one that was just... Man... I think the best friend is a rapist. The best friend of the main character is a rapist, and they're still friends. Uh, that's that's like the the whole reason why I didn't like it. But uh, if you can get past that, hey, it's whatever. But those are two that I personally didn't like, but other people seem to love. And as far as the Ring movie, I I, I liked the Ring. Um, I liked the American adaptation too. Um, I don't really have a favorite as far as that goes. Next up, we have, and this is important. Um, that you get the right edition, we're going to talk about that. But before you run off and grab this, listen up. So we have Battle Royale by, who? Ko Koshin Takami. Okay, uh, this one, you have to, if you're reading this in English, you have to get this version with this cover. This is the only version that I am recommending. Again, this is the only version that I am recommending. It seems that all of the other ones, it says, A New Translation by Nathan Collins. First off, thank you, Nathan Collins. <laughs> the original, the, ooh, the original uh, translation to this was terrible. Um, I did a look inside when it was first out. I think it's still available, too. I don't know if it's under contract or what. But uh, it's still floating around out there. Do not get it. It is terrible. Um, I don't know how things like that get published. I honestly don't. But this one is fantastic. Um, if you're a fan of things like The Running Man or Hunger Games or whatever, definitely pick this book up. It is dark. It is twisted. It ends a little too neatly for my tastes. But that's, I mean, the, the entire tone of the book, this book is what, 700 pages long? Hang on, give me a second. 640 pages long. The entire tone of the book is dark. Dark. And the tone of the ending does not fit whatsoever. It was jarring. Hang on, I got my coffee cup out of the way. Got to make another stack. All right, so got those two. Next up, 
We talked about this uh, in my review for Haruki Mirakami's Wind Slash pin Pinball. Haruki Mirakami's After Dark is probably the best gateway drug you, you can come across. Um, and none of these are in order. I just want to throw this in in the middle because uh, even though I think it's the best one out of all of them, uh, the, not many people are going to agree with that. Uh, but if you're going to read Mirakami, this is where you want to start. The main reason for it is it's under 300 pages. A lot of his stuff is around 300-400 pages. Um, he does have huge epics like 1Q84, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicles. I think Kafka on the Shore is pretty big. And his new one, Killing Common and Tori, is long also. But if you really want to check him out in very short bits, he has loads of uh, short story collections. Like uh, The Elephant Vanishes, uh, Men Without Women. There's, there's a load of them. But uh, if you want to try out his novels, this is a perfect place to start. It's just weird enough that if you can, if, if you can not stomach the weird, if you like the weird, you will like the weird in his other books. But it's not so over-the-top weird that it'll chase away your average reader. I guess, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's kind of like a labyrinth situation. Every single one of the books that I've read, except for Norwegian Wood, by Haruki Mitakami, kind of give me that labyrinth feel, that other world set in reality kind of, kind of deal. Let me know if you like labyrinth. <laughs> if I get anybody down there saying they hate labyrinth, I might have to block them. Just kidding. Kidding. Next up, we have Natsuo Kurinos Out. Um, this, this author is fantastic. You know, there, there's some stuff in this book that I was just... I was shocked by. I'd love to see this turned into a television drama, like a miniseries event or something like that, because there it fits so well with uh, the tone of like a, a Netflix, you know, original special or an Amazon Prime original special. There are scenes in this, especially the ending, um, that were so so unforeseen. I, I had no idea they were coming, um, and the way the uh, the the ladies react to a certain situation. It's the whole plot of the book, and I don't want to give anything away because I want you to enjoy it for yourself. But something happens, and they have to clean it up. And the way the women in this book respond is priceless. Um, this is also one of the inspirations. If you've read my own book, The Sound of Broken Ribs, this is one of the inspirations for that book. Um, it had, they have nothing to do with each other. Storylines aren't anywhere near um, the same. But... Uh, you get into this one and you might feel the tonal quality. Um, you might get where I got the inspiration for that book for. Last but not least, um, we have The Thief by ooh, Fuminori Nakamura. I hope that's right. I don't, I don't know. I can't... Fuminori... Fum, anyways, uh, so this is The Thief. This is the one that, got, that made me uh, fall in love with this author. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get into his newest book. Most of his books are around 150 to 250 pages. His newest one's 800. It's called Cult X, and I haven't been able to get into it. I'm going to keep on trying, but I'm not doing a good job. Uh, but as far as introductions to an author, this book was fantastic. There's a, a sequel, prequel, prequel, whatever the heck it's called, uh, called The Kingdom, and it also ties into the boy in the woods, something like that. Um, but this book by itself is fantastic. Um, I've also heard, and I forgot to bring this one out, I've also heard good things about a novel called uh, Villain. Uh, it's got a great cover, but the, the problem with that is I can't remember the, the name of the author, and I didn't bring the hardcover out, so I apologize. But that's those are my recommendations. I know Top 5 Friday kind of, inter kind of turned into a Top 8-ish, but I, I want to do this on Top 5 Friday from here on out, give you five of my choices, and then give you, you know, other options that other people like that maybe, you know, I don't like or that I downright hated. Um, I really hated uh, the woman in the dunes, but that's just me. So, if you have a Top 5 list, Top 10, whatever, uh, of Japanese literature that you'd like to share, please comment down below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!